Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 9, Multiplying Polynomials, Classwork Exercise 1. Gisela computed 342 times 23 as follows. So she did a grid where this rectangle is length 300, this rectangle is length 40, and this is length 2. And then 23, this being a width of 20, and this being a width of 3. So she broke up hundreds, tens, and ones, tens, and ones. And she said that 300 times 20 is, or 300 times 20 is 6,000. 400 times 20 is 800. Or 40 times 20 is 800. And 2 times 20 is 40. Then 300 times 3 is 900. 40 times 3 is 120. And 2 times 3 is 6. And then adding diagonally, in other words, the same digits, 6,000, that's the only one. 800 plus 900 is 1,700. 40 plus 120 is 160. And 6. So when you add all these up, you get 6, 6, 7, 7. So her final answer is, so I've explained what she's doing. But I'll bring it in. Okay, she used an area model, finding the area of each rectangle and then adding them together. And her final answer would be 7,866. It says use a geometric diagram to compute the following products. Okay, so I created this model, and the 3x squared is going to go here, the 4x is going to go here, and the constant 2 is going here. And then down the side is going to be represented by this. So this will be 2x, and this will be 3. So when I multiply all of these together, it's 3x squared times 2x, which is 6x to the third. 3x squared times 3 is 9x squared. Now I'm going to the 4x. 4 times 2 is 8x times x is x squared. 4x times 3 is 12x. Onto the constant, 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times 3 is 6. Now when I go diagonally like these arrows up here do, okay, so I just moved this over and I drew arrows. So what we're going to do is go diagonally and add these all up. So 6x cubed, there's no other cubes. That's just going to be 6x cubed. 9x squared plus 8x squared is 17x squared. 4x plus 12x is 16x, and then 6. So our answer is 6x cubed plus 17x squared plus 16x plus 6. Okay, so here is C. I've created this grid. And the first term, 2x squared, will go here. The second term, the linear term, 10x goes here, and the constant, 1, goes here. That came from this. And I'm going to put this as my height, x squared plus x plus 1. And then multiply it through. 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times x is 2x cubed and 2x squared times 1 is 2x squared. 10x times x squared is 10x cubed. 10x times x is 10x squared, and 10x times 1 is 10x. And then 1 times all these is just those, x squared, x, and 1. Now add these up diagonally. I get 2x to the fourth. I get 2x cubed plus 10x cubed, which is 12x cubed. I get 2x squared plus 10x squared plus x squared, which is 2 plus 10 and 1 is 13x squared, and 10x plus 1x is 11x, and then 1. So my answer is 2x to the fourth plus 12x cubed plus 13x squared plus 11x plus 1. And that is this times that. 
Okay, so I have a binomial times a trinomial. So this is only two terms. So if I put the two terms, x and then negative 1 across the top, and then this is going to be the 3 along the side, x cubed, 6x squared, and negative 5. Think of this as plus a negative 1 and plus a negative 5. So now I'm going to multiply through, and x times x cubed is x to the fourth. x times 6x squared is 6x cubed, and x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Negative 1 times x cubed is negative x cubed. Negative 1 times 6x squared is negative 6x squared, and negative 1 times a negative 5 is a positive 5. And then diagonally, x to the fourth. 6x cubed minus x cubed is 5x cubed. Negative 5x does not go with this squared, so be careful. This has to be by itself, so these two don't go together, so you need to be careful there. So what I would need to do is... Um, move this here and have this be from here since they don't match okay x squared and x can't be added so just be careful when that happens and i get a negative 6x squared and then a negative 5x by itself and then it's constant 5 so my answer is x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 6x squared minus 5x plus 5. Okay, so I want to show you what you can do to combat this issue here. So I have a linear term, which is to the first power, and then a constant. This goes from a th power of 3 to a power of 2 to a power of 0. It skipped the power of 1. So what I could do in essence is draw another rectangle like this okay just trying to make this the same as the others close enough and then draw a segment down from here Okay, and what I'm going to do now is erase this 5 here and put it here. Negative 5 goes here. And how many x to the 1s did I have in this term here? There weren't any, so if I put 0x to the 1, then my arrows will all line up if I move this down here and this here. And this will be my x is like so. So I will review this. x to the fourth goes there. These two get added to get this. These two got added to get this. And actually, this goes here now. And x times 0x is just 0x. So let me go through this again. x times x cubed is x to the fourth. x times 6x squared is 6x cubed. x times 0x is 0x squared. Okay. And then x times negative 5 is negative 5x. And then negative 1 times x cubed is x cubed. Negative 1 times 6x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 1 times 0x is 0x and negative 1 times a negative 5 is positive 5. So when I go through now, 6x cubed minus x cubed is 5x cubed. 0x squared minus 6x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 5x plus 0x is still negative 5x, and then 5. So that way I don't get an error and nothing lining up like I did before. So all you have to do is put this, and I always called it a spacer and that will prevent that from happening. So always look at your terms, and when you skip one, put one in with zero as its coefficient. Okay.
Okay, moving on to the next one, exercise two. It says multiply the polynomials using the distributive property. So instead of doing that chart we just did, we're going to do the distributive property. And I'm going to write it all out first. So we're going to have 3x squared times x to the fourth plus 3x squared times negative 2. x plus 3x squared times 1 plus now we're going to do x times x to the fourth plus x times negative 2x plus x times 1 plus and then finally negative 1 times x to the fourth I'll do this over here this is just a continuation here let me fix it okay so I just move these over a little bit so now where am I I did x times 1 last, so now I'm at negative 1 times x to the 4th plus negative 1 times a negative 2x plus, that's a negative there, negative 1 times 1 Okay, so now that I do that, I'm going to do the multiplication. 3x squared times x to the fourth is 3 times 1, which is 3. x squared times x to the fourth is x to the 2 plus 4, or x to the sixth. Plus 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6. x squared times x to the 1 is x to the third. Plus... 3x times 1 is simply 3x squared, 3x squared times 1, plus x times x to the 4th is x to the 5th, plus x times a negative 2x is a negative 2x squared, plus x times 1, which is x, plus negative 1 times x to the 4th is negative x to the 4th, and then plus a negative times a negative, so that will be plus 1 times 2x is 2x, and then plus and a negative 1 times a positive 1 is negative 1. Okay, so now I'm looking for like terms. I have a 3x to the 6, no like terms. 3x to the 6. I have an x cubed, no other x cubes, but I have a 5, I have a 4, so stuff is out of order here. So I've used my 3x to the 6. 3, 2, 5. Here's a 5, no other 5, so I focus on this, plus x to the 5th. And then I look for the next number, which is 4, x to the 4th, minus x to the 4. And then I'm looking for 3s, and it's right here, minus 6x cubed. And I have 2 that have x squareds. So 3x squared minus 2x squared is 1x squared, or just x squared. And I only have 1, I have an x here and here, so 2x plus x is 3x and then my constant minus 1. And there it is by using the distributive property. Okay, exercise 3. The expression 10x squared plus 6x cubed is the result of applying the distributive property to the expression 2x squared times 5 plus 3x. It is also the result of applying the distributive property to 2 times the quantity 5x squared plus 3x cubed. 
or to x times 10x plus 6x squared, for example, or even to 1 times itself. For a through j below, write down an expression such that if you applied the distributive property to your expression, it would give the result presented. Give interesting answers. So this is just a lesson on factoring. And there are different things we could factor out. We could just factor out one thing, or we could factor out a different thing, or we could factor out three different things. So if I factored out an A, that would leave 6 plus 14A when I distribute. I will get the original. I could have taken out a 2A. And 2A times 3 is 6A. And 2A times 7A is 14A squared. So there's a couple of examples there. So I'm just going to keep going through. And now the next one here, I see 2, so I'll just factor out a 2. And I'm going to factor out the GCF and all of these just to be different. You may not do that, but I'm going. you could have just factored out a 2 here, or a, an x, or an x squared, or an x cubed even, or an x to the fourth, but that's it. Okay, so maybe I will be different, and I'll factor out a 2x cubed. So when I do that, I get 2 divided by 2 is 1, x to the fourth divided by x cubed is x, plus 2 divided by 2 is 1 x to the fifth divided by x cubed is x squared, plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. x to the tenth divided by x cubed is x to the seventh. So if I distribute this, I will get this. That's one example. Okay. This one here, I see that there's factors of 3. I will take out a 3, and that is all. 6 divided by 3 is 2. The z squared is still there. Minus 15 divided by 3 is 5. The z is still there. So there's one possible answer. Now, I'm just putting one answer. There are others. This one I will do. I see a 42. I see a 14. I see a 77. Um, 7 times 11 is 77. 7 times 2 is 14. Seven. So a 7 will come out. And I'm going to take a W as well on this one. So 42 divided by 7 is 6. W cubed divided by W is W squared. Minus 14 divided by 7 is 2. W divided by W is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, so that's it. Plus 77 divided by 7 is 11. W to the fifth divided by W is W to the fourth. So there we have it. This one here. I can factor out an a plus b. So if I take an a plus b out of this whole thing, I'll be left with z squared plus z cubed. Is that right? Yes. OK. That's one possible answer. OK. Here, I'm going to factor out 1 half. So 3 halves divided by 1 half is 3s squared, plus 1 half divided by 1 half is 1. 15, 6, 9, 3. I see 3s in all of these, so I'm going to factor out a 3. I see p's. I see r's. I'm going to do the GCF this time, highest possible uh, degree of each variable p to the third, p squared, p to the fourth, and p to the third. So the smallest one is p squared. That's the most I can take out, is the smallest of, the, of all of them. And then r to the fourth, r to the fifth, r to the second, r to the sixth. So I can take two r's out, or r squareds. And when I do that, 15 divided by 3 is 5. p cubed divided by p squared is p. Remember when you divide, you subtract powers r to the 4th divided by r squared is r to the 4 minus 2, which is r squared, minus 6 divided by 3, 2. p squared divided by p squared is 1, so it cancels. r to the 5th divided by r squared is r cubed, plus 9 divided by 3 is 3, p to the 4th divided by p squared is p squared, and r squared divided by r squared is 1, so that's we're done there, plus 
3 divided by 3 is 1, and I'm left with a square root of 2. p cubed divided by p squared is p, and r to the 6 divided by r squared is r to the 4th. So there's that. So all this is is a factoring practice. All right, this one here I can take out. I'm just going I'm not going to mess with the numbers here because of the decimals. I could take out a 0.4, but I'm going to just take out x's and I'll take out x to the 8 this time and that would leave 0 0.4 x to the 9 divided by x to the 8 is x to the 1 minus 40 x to the 8 divided by x to the 8 is 1. So that's my answer. I. Okay, this is getting interesting. Hmm. I, 4x plus 3, 2x plus 2. Hmm. I have to find something that will come out of both terms, and this separates our two terms. So what does this have that this also has? Hmm. I could factor out an x squared. So if I took an x squared out of this, it would be x squared times, I don't want the parentheses there, it would be, let me start this over, this 4x plus 3 stays there. But if I take an x squared out of this, that would leave me with 1 plus x minus leave the 2x plus 2 alone, take out an x squared from here, so we'll see I'm taking out an x squared from both, then I would be left with 1 plus x here. Okay, that's one thing I could have done, but I would rather not do that. I would rather do something like this is in both terms. So if I factor out an x squared plus x cubed, that would leave me with the first term plus the second term. And I suppose I could put this in double parentheses, like so. Okay, one, one correction to this. That's not a plus, it's a minus, because that is a minus that I'm pointing at there. So put that back there, put a minus here. So it's x squared plus x cubed. This factored out of both would leave me with the quantity 4x plus 3 minus the quantity 2x plus 2. So when I distribute this, I will get that. Okay, this one here has a z, 2z plus 5... Mm. 2z plus 5, huh? Let me think about this one a moment. This one's a little tricky. I have a 2z plus 5 here. I have a 13z here. 2z then 13's prime. That can't do anything with this. But this z plus 2, or z minus 2, will go into this. It's a factor of this. So if I multiply z minus 2 times 13 plus, hmm. okay, I will factor out a z minus 2. So if I take a z minus 2 out, what, I, what do I have to multiply this term by here? So if I took this out, it would be times this, 2z plus 5. Okay, so I'm multiplying this all together, so let's see, this 2z plus 5 is right here. I have a minus sign, so I need a minus sign here. And if I take a z minus 2, well, 13z divided by z is just simply 13. And then I'm left with z minus 3. Okay, so what I really did was, was I factored out a z minus 2 from this. Okay.
Okay. Do you see that? And you're probably saying no. So let me let me explain it a different way. Z minus two and thirteen Z minus twenty six are factors. Z minus two will go into thirteen Z because thirteen will go into twenty six twice. So thirteen Z minus twenty six equals thirteen times Z minus two. So the first thing I want to do is replace that. So let me just rewrite everything. 2z plus 5 times z minus 2 minus, and instead of that 13z minus 26, I'm going to put 13 times z minus 2 times z minus 3. Okay. So I have a z minus 2 in this term. I have a z minus 2 in this term. So I can factor that out. z minus 2 times 2z plus 5 minus 13 times z minus 3. Okay, hopefully you see it now. All right, exercise 4. Sammy wrote a polynomial using only one variable, x, of degree 3. Maisha wrote a polynomial in the same variable of degree 5. What can you say about the degree of the product of Sammy and Maisha's polynomials? Okay. Okay. Well, Sammy wrote a polynomial using variables of x. Of degree 3. So this is Sammy's. Maisha wrote a polynomial of the same variable, x, of degree 5. And they multiplied them. What would happen if we did the product? Well, when multiplying, we keep the base when they're the same, and we add the exponents. So we would result in a polynomial of degree 8. Extension. Find a polynomial that, when multiplied by this, gives us this. Okay. Alright, this to find factors of polynomials, we just divide by the other factor. Let me explain that. Um, 14 equals 7 times 2. Do you agree? So 7 is a factor of 14, and 2 is a factor of 14. But if I don't tell you that it's 2, and I tell you that 7 is a factor of 14, what is the other factor? How would you answer that question? Well, you would call it a variable x, and you'd say, well, to find that variable, I'll divide both sides by 7, and 14 divided by 7 is 2, and that's what I had there. So to, when you're given a product and a factor, and you divide the product by the factor, you'll find another factor, and that's what we're going to do here. So I take 2x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 1. And I'm going to divide it by 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. So the first thing I do is I just look at the first term, 2x squared and 2x cubed. Well, what do I have to multiply 2 by to get 2? Well, it's 1. 1 times 2 is 2. And x squared and x cubed, I'm missing an x. So x times x squared is x cubed. So I subtract and I get 0 right here. Plus, and then I just multiply. Well, I'm not going to put the 1 there because 1x is just simply x. So let me just replace that with just x. So x times 2x squared is 2x cubed. And we subtract. And then I multiply this term through the whole polynomial x times 3x is 3x squared, and x times 1 is x. So then I subtract all of this, okay, and I'll, I usually put parentheses here so we don't mix it up. So 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. x squared minus 3x squared is minus 2x squared and negative 2x minus x is negative 3x, and negative 1 comes down. OK. 
Okay, and then I do it again. 2x squared, how, what do I have to multiply 2x squared by to get a negative 2x squared? Well, that's negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x squared is negative 2x squared, and we're subtracting. Um, negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x, and negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So negative 2x squared minus a negative 2x squared is plus. It's opposite, so I get 0. Negative 3x plus 3x is 0. And negative 1 minus times a negative 1, I'm sorry, negative 1 minus a negative 1 is plus 1, and that is also 0, so there's no remainder. So a polynomial that when multiplied by 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 gives us this answer. The polynomial is x minus 1. Okay, that is the end of lesson 9. Go do your problem set.